so that we can put it up later. So let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks that in your grace we are again gathered to share this time in you. We pray that as we consider and reflect on your word, we will once again be guided by you to give ourselves to the deepening faithfulness into which you consistently call us. So cleanse us, correct us, and cause that we will glorify you in all we do. For we pray through Christ Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So pleasant good night to everybody. And good night to all those who will catch it later on YouTube. Very sorry that we are not able to broadcast it live, but the technology is not allowing us. We should just go ahead and post that we are having trouble with the YouTube broadcast, just in case people are waiting. So trust that everybody's okay though, everybody's doing well. Trust that this Holy Week time has been uh, stimulating in some way for us. Are you all hearing me okay? I'm not hearing any responses. Everybody doing all right? Yes, 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 sir. We're okay. Great, thank God. So, our scripture reading for tonight is from, we continue in the Gospel of John, and it is from John's Gospel, chapter 13. John's Gospel, chapter 13, from 21 to 30. The 32, from 21 to 32. And as usual, we will share on screen. All right, so it reads as follows. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter, therefore, motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon, Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, 
Now the Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for the word. Now you may notice that it is the second time we are reading about the betrayal since we because we started there on Sunday. But this is a different version in John's gospel. And it would be is it is not a bad idea for us to compare the two stories so that we can get a better understanding. So I have both of them on screen now. Are you are you seeing this? Uh, let's try it out again. Right, you should be seeing both now. Now, do you notice any difference? Do you notice the differences? So John's gospel is on the left, Matthew's gospel is on the right. So we are told in John's gospel that after Jesus had finished saying um, the one who receives, whoever receives one whom I sent receives me and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Uh, in, in the following passage, he was, in the previous passage, he had been talking about it had been the washing of the disciples' feet and the commissioning of the disciples to be witnesses in his name. So he said he was troubling spirit and said, truly, one of you will betray me. In Matthew's gospel, the story begins with Matthew um, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days, the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. So he, he, he was telling of the crucifixion here in Matthew, but in John, he was talking about the betrayal that will lead to the crucifixion. It's later on in Matthew's gospel, this is 26, um, verse 14, where we see Judas agrees, goes to the chief priests and agrees to betray Jesus. Of course, the chief priests uh, were already plotting to kill him. Because verse 3, then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth. Um, and then now we go down to Jesus at the Passover with his disciples. And he said to them uh, in verse 21, while they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. So, and in, in, in John's gospel, on the other hand, there's a whole detail about, the, whereas in the in Matthew's gospel, the, the disciples are asking, is it I? And surely not I. In, in, in John's gospel, it is Peter who asks John, the writer of the gospel, um, identified in the gospel as the beloved disciple, the disciple who Jesus loved who asked Jesus who it is, and Judas is identified. 
So it's interesting to compare the respective accounts and the emphasis, the different emphasis that the uh, gospel writers bring. So just wanted to point out that to us so we um, remember that the story was looked at before, but looked at from the perspective of Matthew's gospel, whereas um, tonight we're looking at it from the perspective of John's gospel. Now, I want to encourage us to reflect on a, on a, on a few things from the story tonight. So the first thing I want us to reflect on is the fact of how our betrayal affects Jesus. We looked at the betrayal more directly on, on Sunday night, but tonight we're looking a little bit more on its, on its impact. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit. And declared, very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. Of course, the disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. And um, Peter entered into his little in inquisit investigation to find out who it would be. But the, the, the thing that I want to emphasize is that verse 21. Jesus was troubled in spirit um, because of the betrayal. And I think we can identify that being troubled in spirit as uh, reflective of at least two things. One, it is reflective of the fact that when we betray the Lord, when we um, do not operate in keeping with what is expected by the Lord, it affects the Lord. It, it grieves what it says, he was troubled in spirit. It grieves the spirit of God that we would betray God. But it also uh, troubled Jesus because it was a signal of what was to come. And it is true that when we betray the Lord, um, when we do any form of betrayal hurts, the one we betray impacts them significantly. And in this case, the text is indicating that our betrayal hurts the, the, the Lord significantly. How do you believe that that should impact how we approach living the Christian life to please God? If we bear in mind that our betrayal can so hurt and impact God, do you think that that will make any difference in how we try to live in such a way as to avoid betraying the Lord. So tell me, what do you think about the fact that our betrayal hurts the Lord? One. And two, how should the fact that our betrayal hurts the Lord impact the way we live so that we can avoid the dream. Who wants to take that up? But wouldn't that be natural, Pastor, for any betrayal to, to affect someone? Even if you're not going that far, say the Lord, but betrayal 
we, and we have, to, we, have to, impact. we have to go this far this evening because the I know we are going that far because that's where we are. But betrayal on any any level affects someone. But it's but going you, to affect someone. But do so you think? But do you if think we are going to go? The, if we are looking at impacting on the Lord, so betrayal must or will affect the Lord if we are calling ourselves true Christian and we are going to follow the Lord and want to follow his example and we are going to say we ought to be doing his will and following his will and we are going to betray and not doing so it's going to impact all right so let me let me ask the question this way that I agree yes ask it that, another way that, no no, not because anything was wrong with the way. I just to interact with, nothing was wrong with the way I, I, I asked it. Just to interact with your point of view. I agree that by its very nature, betrayal impacts somebody. But the trouble is that often when we are betraying, we are not thinking that way. We just, whether it is to save our skin, as in the case of Peter, or it is to get some income uh, as it to capitalize, as in the case of Judas, or as some say, to force Jesus' hand, something we, we didn't explore, but that's a theory that some people put forward. Whatever the reason, whenever we are betraying, do we normally pause to consider the impact of our betrayal? On so the that's that's different now do we consider the impact that it have on others because or do I we consider the was, impact it has because my, my my original questions were um one do we think about uh whether our betrayal impacts the lord and should the fact that our betrayal impact the lord affect uh, our efforts to avoid it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sister Andrea. So normally, I think when, when people are betraying, when when the, the, the act of betrayal happens, is because maybe somebody's hurting and they think that this is a way to get to even the score sometimes. And so people don't normally say, oh, I wonder how what I do is going to affect. I don't think people normally do. So as Christians, we would have a different outlook on things because we're not going to be revengeful. We're not going to be vindictive because to me, that's what betrayal end up being. You are being purposefully, spitefully doing something to cause hurt. So as Christians, we should not be found in that state where we are so annoyed or so peeved that somebody that we say we have to do something to get even the score so if we should find ourselves in that position then we should seek help because it means that our spiritual life is not where it ought to be and so we would need help to get us on that part where we don't do things to cause others to be hurting because if we are Christians, then it's love that governs our, our, our steps and our lives. And we don't want to hurt people because then we would not be showing the love that we are supposed to show to fellowship Mother. and to bring others into the fold. Thank you, Sister Andrea. So you're highlighting one of the motivations that um, can drive um, betrayal, like 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 revenge or or spite, or or jealousy. Of course, betrayal can come just out of unfaithfulness, or um, immaturity, or um, the 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 effectiveness of or or the insidiousness of temptation. But the the wider point is is taken that whatever the factor that leads us to betray when we betray it has an impact and therefore we should think about our actions carefully 
so that we do not find ourselves betraying, especially the Lord, and and cause the the impact um, that betrayal would bring. I think it's just tremendous that we have it before our eyes that Jesus knew Judas was going to betray. Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And the very thought that he would betray him caused him to be so disturbed, so upset. And, and, and I just imagine as, as God in Christ through the spirit continues to watch over our lives. And, and as Christians, we have uh, God in Christ through the spirit living within us. We are supposed to have an active relationship with God. So when we, we go off on any tangent or any course or any activity that is a betrayal of God, this just the idea of how it pains God, how it, oh, oh, oh um, God is troubled by our betrayal. I think that if we think on that a little bit, it might help us to, to, to decide more firmly and fully to avoid this, this matter of betraying. But let me, let me carry you on and, and see if you will take a little more interest in this. Some, somebody was wanting to... Yes, sir. Yes, Sister Bev. Good night, everyone. Good night. From what I have seen here, Pastor, mm -hmm. Judas says, um betrayal mm -hmm. it seemed to me that it was spontaneous it i don't get the impression that it was premeditated because yes, but, but but you remember so, sorry sorry sister sorry sister babe not to cut you but remember we just read from matthew's gospel where he actually went ahead to the high priests and and, and ask them what they would give him if he hand them over. And it says that from that time, he began to plot and plan. It was premeditated. From what the John's um, gospel. Right, so, so we have, we have to tell this, this, this story. Um, we have to take it in, 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 in compass. You have to bear in mind um, that background. It, it, here in 21, it says that... Um, one of you will betray me, right? In in twenty one, and the I don't know if you had gone ahead um, to to um, the where the actual betrayal was done, which is further on, which is actually not in our reading, but even Jesus in in verse twenty seven said, "Whatever you you are going to do, um, do it quickly." Which suggests that there is a some forethought there. And then he goes out and he finds the, the uh, it's, in, it's in chapter four, it's in a further chapter. He goes out and he finds, I think it comes back in chapter eight. He goes out and he finds detachment of, of people and leads them. It's not just spontaneous, so man. It, it, so it's premeditated then. He yeah, had yeah. he had planned that. Right. Okay, then as Christians, mm. we you, you have called, you know, you, so you you were I, I think you were going to draw up a contrast now between where when we sin on the spur of the moment as opposed to presumptuous sin. Right. As Christians. And we we betray whoever when whoever we betray. Mm -hmm. And we know that as Christians we are displeasing we are displeasing God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And none of this should be in our hearts as Christians. Mm -hmm. But the person who is not a Christian. Mm -hmm. person who does not have that relationship with, with Christ, mm -hmm. the, the betrayal would not be as searing as, as the, the okay, Christian I would. I see what you mean. What you are saying is that 
you expect somebody who is not a Christian might betray you because they don't have that transformed life in Christ that would uh, make it less likely that they would. But the believer, yeah. but the believer who is supposed to be following faithfully, when they betray, um, it's things because you don't expect that as believers they would. Right. I get you. I get you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that very much. I, of, of course, betray, betraying one another is a form of betrayal of the Lord. But but so I want us. We shouldn't be betraying anyone. But but I want us to think um, more specifically of when our actions is a betrayal of faith in Jesus. That that the faith and commitment that we have to Jesus. We, we, when we engage in any form of unfaithfulness or, or unrighteousness, it betrays God's trust in us um, and God's dependence on us to live for him. I, I hope that we will, we will give some thought to so dedicating ourselves to God that we avoid that. But I want to carry you on a little bit and, and see how you respond to this. That we see in this story not just how it grieves God when we betray, but don't we also see how people are interested in other persons' betrayal? So verse 22 says, the disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. And, and don't bother get Sister Bev started on that um, today. Um, Simon Peter therefore mentioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, this is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon, his carrier. Is it true, sisters and brothers, that even though we should be concerned about our relationship, primarily concerned about our relationship with Jesus, that we, 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 we like to show an interest in, in whether others are, are living for Jesus or not. You know, here we're so-and-so do. Or, or are who been to so-and-so? Isn't that a feature of our conduct sometimes that we, we like to identify the failures of others and we like to identify others who fail? And um, sometimes we use it to gloat. Sometimes we use it to condemn. Sometimes we use it to, to shun. We use it to do all kinds of things. But why, why do you think we are so interested in the failures and the betrayal of others? Peter, Peter went to great lengths to find out who he was. And sometimes we go to great lengths to find out about people too, especially if, them, if, them, if there's a little um, sauce about them or a little gossip or, you know, you know here we're so-and-so doing. You know, here we're up to so-and-so. Why are we like that, sisters and brothers? If you agree that we are like that. So one, do you agree that we are like that? And secondly, why are we like that? Who will take all this? I agree that we are, we are like that. But I'm also thinking, couldn't hmm. Peter be asking that because he wanted to know if if the, if Jesus thought if it because he said one of you would betray me, mm. so he if he was thinking that he think anyone could he, he could thinking of anyone going to betray him in, think, in thinking of him himself. So yeah. in asking him, he was asking to say who is it? Am just I? Of, it's just out of, it's just out of curiosity. It so, could be out of so, curiosity to actually, find out of whether it is someone else or is it I? Right, because that, that's the question they ask. That's the way the question is asked in, in Matthew's gospel. Is it I, Lord? But yes. in this, but in this, in this case, case, in this case, 
The question is not, is it I? Is, is, the question is, who is it? And here is where I, I would um, <clears throat> take that sister Perlene. Would another response, would, would another could another response have been for them to look into themselves? to see their own vulnerability and susceptibility rather than um, go into this investigation to, to look at who is it. Is, is, is it the kind of, of question, the kind of situation that um, should have led to introspection rather than investigation? Well, the is it I would be more uh, introspection rather than uh, who is yes. it. Right. And so, so John was looking at it in a more a wider thing and maybe Matthew is looking at it in a more introspection. Right. Which is two person giving the story. Right. From, from different points of view. From but, different but it, points of view. But it, but it helps. Because remember, remember, remember why we're reading these stories this week. We're reading these stories to look at ourselves. And, and reading this story, we see something there that says, you know, that is like us. If, if, um, if, pastor, if pastor or deacon or our leader ever announced one morning, say, boy, one of, one of our members gone bad, what would be the next question? Is who, who is I wonder is who me sure and me. And and and, <laughs> and then and then when we find out is who, what we going to do? Well, one of the one of the most thing most of us would do is to ask somebody else what happened. Mm -hmm. Right. So so we ask, ask somebody else what, what happened to, to find out. But but when we find out, is it going to stop with us? Nah. Sister, Sister Avis is not stopping with us. It, 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 in some cases, it could or it, it stop could. somewhere, but but, in but, some gen people, but generally, generally speaking, generally, what, generally speaking, people speaking people in a are, number of cases, it stretch and go round and go round and go round. But some we, of us have the we, principle to to pull to, things together and mm -hmm. work with things to to, so, to so the wonderful thing would be is if we would um take the information and pray for that person or take the information and um um go visit to encourage and support that person or yeah. or take yeah. the information to try to steer the person away from where they are going but sometimes but Sometimes we take the information and we spread it further and wider. And sometimes we take the information and we add to it and embellish it and expand on it and, and make it even worse than, than, than it actually was. So this is, this, is, this is another opportunity for us to look at ourselves. Are we sometimes more interested in other people's failure than in our unfaithfulness that, so more interested in finding out other people's failure than in avoiding our own unfaithfulness that's, that's how I want to put it are we sometimes more interested in finding out others failures rather than in preventing our unfaithfulness Something to think about this Holy Week as we look at what is happening around Jesus. I'll give you a third one. I'll give you a third one. And I'm um, so sorry, our friends. I keep checking if there would be any improvement in the system, but, but none. Um, so we don't have our YouTube friends on with us tonight, but I, I asked I, I asked you a third thing. Um, so when 
Jesus had dipped the bread. Verse, verse 27 says, after he, he gave it to, uh, verse 26 says he gave it to Judah, son of Simon, this carry. After he had received the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that Judas had the, because he had the common purse, uh, he might have been going to give something to the to the poor, or he needed to buy something for the festival. But this brother who had who had plotted to take down Jesus now went to bring the, the, the matter to a conclusion. And, and I think the point of reflection that I want us to consider tonight is, is our, our, our vulnerability to the evil one, our, our susceptibility, our availability, you know, how we might live in such a way that we dispose ourselves to being used by by evil. Is that, is that a concern and a lesson? Because it says Satan entered him. Is, isn't that because he was receptive? Isn't that because he was willing? He, isn't that because he had predisposed himself? Isn't it because he had made himself available? And sisters and brothers, how often do we as to use one of granny old time saying, leave ourselves careless? for the devil to get a foothold in our heart and mind. Sometimes it's our thoughts. Sometimes it's the company we keep. Sometimes it's our lack of prayer. Sometimes it is a, a, a failure to give attention to God's word. But uh, uh, sometimes it is how we, we, we play um, with, with evil by, by association. <laughs> They used to have a thing. I don't know if you had this in the country where you grew up, where somebody would, the, the, the youngsters would play what is called nearest. Who can walk the, the nearest to our oncoming vehicle? I don't know if, if that used to be played. I grew up on the devil's race courts. And they used to play this little game called nearest. Who can walk the nearest to the oncoming bus or truck or car? They're really, I do. And then ever the kind of drivers we have today. But in that scenario, if you got you go end up too near one time where you're going to get bounced, something going to hit you, whether a mirror or something going to hit you. So sometimes we play that with the devil we, and with evil, we get near to it and it and it capture us and, and take us over. So how about that? Our vulnerability, our susceptibility, our receptivity, our availability to be used by the evil one. The, the Judas was clearly in that position and, it, and it's, it's something that we would want to avoid. Well, who wants to comment on that? I agree with you, Pastor, in the sense that we have to be, try and be strong and uh, continue to pray, be with the usually tell, we tell others and maybe young people, we need to take, do it for ourselves, try mm. to be with good, in good company, etc. cetera, be, try and be as a influence us in, the, the, leader in the Lord than, rather than. Yes, because vulnerability, the possibility of being led away, that sort of thing, because you are always the possibility mm -hmm. of doing slipping yes. is always there. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure, you know, try at all times to be strong. Keep yourself in groups, your Bible groups, your study groups, etc. Keep good company. And, and, and it's interesting that you're saying that, you know, Sister By the way, Sister Rose um, is is on. Uh, good, 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 well, 
Good to have you, Sister Rose. Bless you. I, I, I think some people may, who may normally be on the YouTube may be um, forced over here with us because of the, the absence of the YouTube. So sorry. But so good to have you with us, Sister Rose. She says she posts in the Zoom chat. Blessed night. And Sister Millicent said, I'm past, I'm in pastor teaching. I think it must be the nearest that Sister uh, Millicent is is um recognizing. But but the 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 thing about it that I wanted to highlight, Sister Pearl, is that the this did not happen to somebody who is way out there, you know. It never happened to somebody who what did not wasn't close to the influence. Is one of the one of the very disciples. That it, that's what I was saying too. Even within the group, you yeah. can. So what I'm saying, you yeah. still have to be be strong, Vig vigilant, vigilant, yes. spiritually yes. vigilant, because yes. it can happen. He was one of the leaders of the group. He was he was like like all the role of treasurer. You know, just he kept the money back to buy their supplies to care for the poor. Like, like a responsibility like that. You, you give that to somebody who is supposed to have spiritual maturity and trustworthy, no so. So yeah. I don't believe I don't believe he, he had it lightly. He had this position because he was he was trusted. But but yet yeah, the trusted one, and, and, and that is how the devil likes to work sometimes. Yeah. The prominent one, the trusted one, um goes after to them because the, the, being in their position, it is going to impact the rest of the body. And, and all the more reason we should be, be very scrupulous in how we live so that we don't leave any opening for, we don't leave any susceptibility to, we don't show any availability to the evil one or to any form of evil taking root in us so that it, to me, to me, the statement, sisters and brothers, I don't know, I don't know you find it that I would love to hear from somewhere of it. To me, it's a frightening statement. You know? It's like it's like the door wide. It never says Satan, Jim Screech, you know? it, it never said him climb through no window. It, it never, it never said it's, it's like it was just so easy, it's like it was welcome. Satan just entered. Sometimes we we can be so ready for the devil to to use us and and it is so sad and and reflecting this week we have to we have to commit to work on that yes sister ben pastor i think i'll go back to peter mm -hmm. i think peter uh was doing some introspection and he thought that he, it is, it is possible. He thought that it was possible for anyone, for himself, mm -hmm. for himself, to be in the position, mm -hmm. to be so near to Jesus, in the position to to betray him. So I think what he was doing is to is yeah. to ask the question: Is it uh, I? Right. And or or going around to ask who it could be. Because, but, but he, he never said he was not asking, "Is it me?" But but I understand your sympathy to Peter, and and it, you you can read it like that. You can read it like that. I, I'm I'm just saying, the the appropriate response, and if this is what Peter was doing, so much the better. It would be introspection. The, the trouble is that sometimes we leave out the introspection and do investigation to find out is who we must go laugh at, or is who we must condemn, or is who we did know say a long time them are going with them something. I, I'm just looking at it. As I said, we are reading the text to read ourselves. And, and it, the right response that we should make is to something like that is introspection. You know, is there a way in which I am making myself available to, to, to evil so that I might betray the Lord? So I, I agree with you that it is possible to read it like that. I, I am also saying that it is possible that what is going on here is that um, when we look at it from, from the point of view of our experience, it's possible 
that what is going on here is investigation of others that we're going to pick up and carry and, and carry around and, and so on. So I, I, I am not denying that it could very well be he had introspection. Right. Yeah, he I, could be. He could I, be. I agree with that. It's, it's not a condemnation of Peter. It is for us to draw the lesson. Right, do, right. Do we, do we do the introspection or do we do the investigation? Um, right. Thank right. you, Sister Bev. Yes, Sister Lorna. Defense mechanism. You think mm -hmm. sometimes, because um, I, I know I'm faulty, but I put myself behind and search out for the other person's fault to come in front to cover up my fault. Is that is another way to talk about that is projection. <laughs> we 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 know we very well know what we are going with, but we we yeah. we not we we rather point finger at others. Exactly. And so we, we and what we, and what we tell, you know? and what we tell ourselves is that um is that at least we're not so bad card them are doing too. Exactly. As if as if you that know? is a as if that is an excuse. Excuse. <laughs> sister That's Rose. Just good, good, sister Lorna. Sister Rose agrees. Ongoing introspection is needed. Okay. And that was uh, trying to monitor the, the chat as well. All right. I, I have one more for us for the night. I noticed some persons very quiet, but I, I guess that happens sometimes. Um, and no pressure, no pressure, just, just the encouragement. But I have one other thought. So far, we have looked at three things. First of all, we have looked at the fact that um, it grieves God. Sorry, verse 21. We have looked at the fact that it grieves God, it affects God, it troubles God when we betray him. Jesus was troubled. Secondly, we notice that sometimes whereas we should respond with introspection when we become aware of, of some betrayal or the possibility of betrayal, sometimes we what we do is an investigation. And the investigation is is utilized for condemnation or and and recrimination and all kind of stuff, rather than the introspection that we should. And thirdly, we notice that uh, sometimes we can have too much receptivity and um, susceptibility and vulnerability and availability to the devil. We put ourselves out so that and, and throw the door open to the devil. We play nearest, Sister Millie said, and put ourselves too close till we get bounced down. And and that is is a is a is a warning for us to to live with that um, depth of dedication and seriousness and and commitment where where we keep so close under the hand, arms of God. That, that we are not easily led astray. Well, the final one I want to, to, to touch on is, is verses 31 and 32. After Judas goes out, uh, all of them connected. The, the grieving, how it grieves God that we when we betray should, should lead us to carry out the introspection rather than the investigation. And as people who introspect, it should lead us to avoid availability and susceptibility to the, to the evil one. But look how we're concluding here tonight. Now. Verses 31 and 30. When he had gone on, when Judas gone, Jesus said, now the son of man has been glorified. And God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Glorified is mentioned here five times in the two verses. Now the Son of Man is glorified and God has been glorified in him. That's 32, 31 and 32. If God has been glorified in the Son, God will glorify the Son in himself 
and will glorify the Son at once. Now, let's do it this way. I wonder if a couple of you could tell me. When people, generally speaking, popularly speaking, when people talk about the glory of God, what are they talking? Aren't they usually talking about something magnificent? Something, when they're talking about the glory of God, they're talking about something resplendent, right? Something auspicious. Um, Beauty. Yes. In fact, I want to associate with, with this. I, I comment on it a few times well. I know, but I think it's relevant here. You have persons today who like to talk about themselves as um, blessed and highly favored, you know, and the, 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 the Lord's, the, the glory of God is shining on them. But I find that when the scripture talks about the glory of God, you realize that the scripture often has a very different idea from what we have here. Judas is gone out to carry out the betrayal. And what Jesus said? He doesn't say the son of man is condemned. You know? He doesn't say the son of man is done for now or devastated. Uh -huh. He says, now the son of man has been glorified. So the glory of God might be attached to some things other than we think the glory of God might be attached to obedience to God's will. The glory of God might be attached to being willing to suffer for the sake of the kingdom. The glory of God may be attached to giving our life for the purposes of God. Not anything for us to boast about and big up yourself about and, and, and say, look at me now, Bo. But to really, truly, humbly, fully give ourselves to do what please God. The, the, the glory, even, even in the Philippians passage, I think we read it Sunday morning. Um, Therefore, God has exalted. You, you know where Jesus was exalted? In this life here. He's on the cross. You know, the cross was the most despicable way to die in the ancient near. And that, that is the glory of God. The willingness to take on the worst for our sake, in obedience to the Father's will, and, and to give to give himself for the, the salvation, for the for the deliverance of the world. So I think it, it, it it's calling us to reevaluate how we understand this. The Son of Man is glorified as the betrayer goes out to betray him to the cross. And God is glorified in the Son who is glorified in the cross. Now the Son of Man has been glorified and God is glorified in him. He's going to the cross. So glory has to do with how God gives God's self for our redemption. Glory has to do with how God gives God's self in opposition to exploitation and evil. Glory has to do with the willingness to die if that's what it requires to stop the marginalization of people in the world. If God has been glorified in the Son, God will also glorify the Son in the Son's self. And will glorify the Son of God. He, he, he was, he was, he was, he was seeing the cross, not as the despicable, not as the uh, the worst, as it was portrayed in the society. He saw it as the tool that God would be used for the salvation of humanity, and that should 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 impact our definition of glory. We want to talk to me about that. We're, we're wrapping up. We have four minutes tonight. Anybody want to comment on that quickly? 
No comment, Pastor. Well said. Well said. <laughs> Thank God, Sister Rose. Nothing from Sister Vera or Sister Idris or no, well, Sister Frick. Or Sister. Go ahead, Sister. Go ahead, no, sister. just thinking how deep it is, sir, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just marveling over how deep this is, God. Thanks be to God. Yes, Sister Ver. Yeah, just quite, just reflecting. So it is really very, very deep, and it gives us a lot to think about. Really. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Yes. Anything, anything from you, Sister Fraser? I was calling Sister Avis earlier. She, um, if she wants to, anybody else? Well, let's go for. Anything. Sister Fraser, you, you have a final word no, for us? No, uh, it is just amazing. Yeah. We just need to reflect on the, those words. Let us pray. Yeah. So before you pray, sir, so we shouldn't be afraid of the cross. No, 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 no. If anyone, if anyone would come after me, yes. finish it for me. Oh my God. Let, him, let, let if, we, if to follow Jesus, we should deny ourselves, take up the cross. Follow me. Mm -hmm. No. That, that way, we yield our will to God's will. We, we practice the obedience. We fulfill the purposes of God's kingdom. We interrupt the marginalization of all, all of these bringing this. And that, and that is the glory of God. Not, not the display, not the excitement, not the entertainment. To really walk in the, in the footsteps of Christ. Let's pray. Holy God, we just give you thanks that you continue to speak to us your word. We just read it together, reflect on it, and you you speak into the depths of our, our being. We pray that as we continue reflecting, we come again tomorrow night, that you will continue to speak to us. Help us, especially tonight, to be mindful that when we betray you, it grieves you. Help us tonight to recall that our response to the possibility and the reality of betrayal should be introspection so that we can make ourselves right with you, we, so that we can ask you to make us right with you, rather than the kind of investigation that's going to spread it and cause condemnation. And, and Lord, help us that we we be so careful to place ourselves under your hand that we are we are not in any position of susceptibility or availability or receptivity to the devil. And Lord, ultimately, help us to to look at your model of being glorified. It's it's doing <coughs> your will. It's fulfilling your purpose it is losing ourselves for your sake it is finding the outpouring of your grace even especially in the cross so lord may this shape our faith as we continue this journey of holy week for we pray through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Spirit be with you and with all God's people on forevermore. Amen. Good night, everyone. Well, hopefully, hopefully tomorrow night we will have uh, been able to fix the, the YouTube issue, but we're going to try and get this video and post it so the YouTubers can watch. I'm Pastor. Yes. I have been contemplating something, thinking about something. Yes. Did Jesus, do we say Jesus rose from the dead or are he 
was raised. Both bone counter I hear oh. persons saying that he was raised from the yes. dead. The, the, both of them are, are biblically correct. But for example, in, in Romans um, 8, the, the indication there is that it, it was it was through the agency of the spirit. Um and that and in that sense he was raised. But then we have to remember as the Trinity and Father, Son, and Spirit always work in concert. So so both both can be accurate. He was raised and he rose. Oh, he rose. And before you go past could yeah. could, could we formulate a synonym for the word glory as used here? Can we say All right. <laughs> so, so, so you you want to, you want us to take that one as assignment and come back with it tomorrow? No problem. That's good, good. enough. <laughs> yes, that's that's a nice suggestion. I like it. Okay. What, thank what, you. what would be a synonym or some synonyms for glory and glorified as used in it's John fine. 13, 31, and thirty two? Excellent. Got you. Good night. Night night. Night night. Best everyone. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>